Flux from Black Forest Labs just came out, and all of these images that you see here are AI generated. In this video, I will be talking about what is Flux, why use Flux, how does Flux work, and go over the ultimate fried rice challenge. All of my code and doc will be available on my website at kevinwoodrobotics.com. And if you guys don't know what the ultimate fried rice challenge is, let's go ahead and take a look at this video. ChatGPT, show me fried rice. Here is a delicious... Please remove the peas. Here is the updated... I still see peas. And my egg is gone. Here's the new... Show me what peas looks like. Fresh, green... I don't want this in my fried rice. Feel free to replace them with... Please remove it. Without peas and... Let's try this. Take all the green food out of the fried rice. All green foods removed. What are those green dots in my fried rice? I can create another for you. Please. Completely free of any... Take all the ingredients out of the fried rice. Here's the plain fried... Add some carrots. With carrots. Keep the orange squares. Take out the green circle. Fried rice with only... Take everything out of the fried rice. Here's the plain... Add some onions. With onions. Good job, ChatGPT. Add some carrots. With onions and carrots. Carrots? and peas are different vegetables. They don't come packaged together. Absolutely. Then why do I see green circles? You've sent too many messages. No! As you can see, generating fried rice is not a trivial task. We're going to go ahead and challenge Flux and see if it can handle this challenging task of generating fried rice without peas later on. So what is Flux? As we saw earlier, it generates images from text using prompts from the user. And Flux, what they do is they offer three different types of models. You have the Pro, the Dev, and the Schnell. You can see that it's different based off of the type of license that it has. The Schnell one is going to be the free one, which you can run locally. But then the Pro is going to be the one where you have to get it through their API. You have to pay for it. And then dev is the non-commercial one, which is somewhere in between the two. So why use Flux? Here you can see that these are some diagrams that show you the different performance metrics that they use to compare Flux with the different models, such as you can see here is comparing with Midjourney, Dolly, the SD3 Medium, the Aura Flow V2, Ideogram, the SD3 Ultra. And then all the other ones is the Flux Pro, Dev, and Chanel. And you can see the different Performance metrics that it looks at is the things like the prompt following, the size aspect variability, the typograph, the output diversity, and the visual quality. So you can see here that Flux tends to outperform here in the green all of these characteristics compared to the other models. And we saw from the very beginning that the quality is definitely very good. Now the prompt following might be a little bit more challenging based off of the specific task that we wanted to do. But um, overall, you can see that it scores very high in all of these areas. And here on the right, you can see that um, it's comparing Flux, uh, Flux SD3 Turbo, and then the SDXL Light, Lightning. And you can see here that here Flux Chanel is definitely outperforming all of these categories again. And here you can see these are some other benefits. You can see that it could generate very small images of 0 0.1 megapixels to all the way up to 2 megapixels. So there's a huge variety of sizes it can generate and still does very well in terms of the output. So how do you use Flux? You go ahead and go to the Hugging Face website here, and then you could just type in your prompt, like Baby Tiger on palm of hand, and it'll generate an image for you. You can set things like the width, and the height of the image, which you can then download the exact image size that you want. Um, or you can also run it locally. Here I have a function here that calls run flux, and you could pass in your prompt. And then you just do everything like you can here on the website. But on locally, you get to attach it or put it together with your API. Um, the thing is, you have to set up your virtual environment and download the stuff properly in order to do it. So all of that is in my code and doc on my website. So go ahead and check it out. So now for the ultimate fried rice challenge, as we saw earlier, let's go ahead and take a look at how it handles very specific detailed prompts. So here we ask it to generate an image of fried rice. So I would say this doesn't quite look like the traditional fried rice, um, but 
it is rice with like I think those are celery chunks or green onion chunks on there. So I don't know why there's a piece of lemon on there. I think that's a little bit weird. <laughs> and now I ask it to do fried rice with no peas. Uh, apparently it doesn't understand that. I think it was very similar to that video that we saw. That video was actually using uh, Dolly because Dolly was integrated in ChatGPT. Uh, but you can see here that we still have peas in the rice, unfortunately. Now I say fried rice, but take out all the green food in it. And unfortunately, I think it ends up adding more green stuff in my fried rice, so that's not quite what I wanted. And now I'm saying, show me peas. Okay, so it knows what peas are. Show me some large peas on a piece of farm. This looks very synthetically generated. Um, now I said, image of fried rice, remove all ingredients. And unfortunately, you can still see that there's ingredients in the rice. And lastly, I say remove all topping from fried rice, just keep the rice. And again, it seems to struggle with this prompt as well. So you can see here that uh, it's not quite perfect, especially if you want to do a very specific and fine task. But in terms of the quality that you can see here, it's pretty good. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.